Happy 4th of July and welcome to D-Lab. Today in the shop, while everybody's getting ready for festivities, I'm working on an old GA20 Del Rey amplifier. It's actually made by a company called WMI Corp out of Rosemont, Illinois. I believe they're out of business. This is one of those bargain bin amps, okay? So it's hot chassis. There's no power transformer. It runs three tubes. It's got a 12AV6, a 12AU6, and a 50L6 output tube. So it should be about a 5 water. Unfortunately, this thing's pretty sick. The output's really weak, and the tremolo is pretty much in op. So let's take a look at it. All right, so I've already pulled the back off the amp, and the thing is pretty cool is they have an old TV cheater cord on this thing. So when you pull off the back, it kills the power. And looky there, there's a UL logo, right? So they approved this hot chassis amp. It's pretty amazing. Here's the front of it. Absolutely no identification on the amp. When I initially got this amp and they told me it was a GA20, I expected to see a Gibson. And then this Del Rey shows up. So either way, I'm very happy it's here. It's going to make for a great presentation. So you remember I told you this is a three tube amp, right? Well, look here. This says model GA20 transistorized amplifier. That also threw me for a spin. It came in the mail and I thought, oh no, it's one of those solid state things. But no, it's a tuber with the wrong logo. So that was pretty wild. Now here's your controls, volume, tone, and your tremolo. And all the inputs to protect you from getting blasted are actually transformer coupled. That was pretty cool. Now let's go inside. You got a schematic. And that's very nice because I searched the web and there's nothing on this amp. All right, we'll sweep up here. There's the old speaker right up there. It's the old circus board. There's a transformer I was telling you about that couples the inputs so you don't get shocked. There's the tubes. And down here is the cheater cord input for your AC power. All right, for a wellness check, we're going to look at the output on the scope. When I did, is I disconnected the speaker, put a 4.7 ohm resistor in its place. I'm going into it with an audio generator. So I'm going to bring up the volume. So you can't hear this, but we can see it. Okay? So let's take a look at the scope. Boy, does that look terrible. It's shaking, it's clipped. Nasty. Alright? So we know this thing came in with a tremolo issue and weak output. Common denominator? It's those right there, filter caps. It's this guy right there. See that big brown ugly thing? We're gonna pull it out. I'm gonna change the filter cap first thing and retest. All right, the other thing I wanna point out is when you're working on a hot chassis amp, this is my AC input here, which is kind of dangerous, right? But I'm coming into it with an isolated variac. So I have isolation so I can hook up my scope and other equipment without worrying of damaging those or the amp. All right, so here's the circus board that the amp is built on. Unfortunately, they didn't allow for a panel to simply remove the amp and repair it. You have to actually disassemble everything. Okay, so that kind of sucks. Anyway, we're going to be changing this cap here. You see he's kind of loose hanging out there in the breeze. We're going to change him out though, but instead of using one of these old ugly three section things, I actually built a capacitor assembly here, okay? So this will screw in where that one's at, and then we'll hook those leads up to this new cap assembly. So there he is, the old Snozoramus. It's been in there a long time. I'm just going to clip him out. We're going to mount the other caps, and I'm going to temporarily screw the terminal board in over here, and we'll retest. So there's the old one. He's out. And there's a new one. He's in. Mounted nice and securely. Wired back in where the other one was. Let's test it. All right, same test as before. Got the audio generator. Here's the scope. You can see the sine wave is still a little messed up, but the shakiness and the distortion is gone. What about the tremolo? 
There it is. Boom, boom. So the tremolo is now working. So the filter cap made a big improvement, but I think we got more bad caps. All right, so the next step, you can see we got some old black beauties here. They gotta come out, okay? They're notorious troublemakers. The other thing, there's a lot of resistors in here with no tolerance bands on them. So I'm gonna need to double check those and any of those that are out of tolerance, we're gonna change. So what I'm gonna do is take out these two screws and hopefully just lift the board up on its side I should be able to access everything I need to. Now here's the biggest bonus of all. Not only do you have a schematic, but you got a part list here. So when you're saying, hey, I can't read those color codes on those caps, well guess what? It's marked on the board. Look it up, grab the value, gather up your parts. The Black Beauty has been changed with a sprague. Now I'm going to do these two little guys here. Now you can see these are one microfarad caps according to the schematic. They're supposed to be 25s, but I do not see any evidence that they've been changed. So, I'm just going to go ahead and put in 25s. Alright, so all the new caps are installed, as you can see. And the new filter cap assembly is over here securely mounted. Next step, let's hook up a guitar and see how she sounds. If you end up with one of these little Delray amps, the GA20, you'll find that the schematic is difficult to find, so here it is. Okay, so there's a nice picture of it for you. Maybe you could do a little print screen if you need it. And here is the parts list, so you can review that. Now the parts list I found was not exactly accurate. And of course uh, the amps referenced as a transistorized amp, which is not accurate either. But if this isn't good enough and you need a JPEG, send me an email and I'll send them to you. Good luck with the project. All right, so here's the initial test of the Del Rey after putting in the new filter caps. There is some inherent buzz to this thing, which I would expect because it doesn't have a power transformer. And they got that transformer coupling on the input, which I've never played with before, but it's clean sounding. <laughs> So it appears to be working. Let me see if I can do anything about that buzz, but probably not. Regardless, as you can see, when you have one of these old amps, the best thing to do is change the caps. Just don't think about it, just do it, because they're always bad. See you again.